Hey, let's uh, let's give away a Savi's lightsaber. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano, and you know what? We are going to give away a Savi's lightsaber today. But the bigger point of this video is I wanted to show you guys some of these things that I was making. I uh, made these little banners for Savi's, actually. Those are the same. I didn't realize I had two of the same ones. But there's another one for uh, Peace and Justice, but I got Protection Defense. I was making banners for all four of the themes, and I wanted to show you guys, give you a little DIY on how these are done. So... These are all sent out. I actually took orders for these a while back. They took way longer than expected to get made. But I wanted to walk you through the process, just so you all, especially those of you who bought them and already have them by now, hopefully, um, you know kind of what went into them, because it took a lot. <laughs> and I, I, I recorded the process. That's kind of also what took a little bit longer with it was me recording it. But when I put all of my footage of what I recorded, and I didn't record the whole, like, every single one that I made, I recorded the process of, like, making... I don't know, maybe five or six, you know, like the everything that went into it. And it was like three hours worth of footage. And I didn't even record me cutting the canvas or ironing it. I spent probably about two hours on each of those. Two hours just cutting canvas and two hours just ironing that canvas so it's flat. So what goes into these is it's actually, it, this is like drop cloth. This is like canvas drop cloth that you would buy for actually got it at low or home depot in the painting supply aisle you put this on the ground so when you're painting walls paint can just drop on this you cut it and throw it away it's just there to catch paint but it's a perfect good canvas that works for this kind of thing and this this isn't like a iron on this is actually paint this is done with airbrush so what i start by doing is first you i got to measure these out i got my big old cutting board and i sit there and i literally with the rolling like a rolling cutter just cut each one, measure it out, set it by, I think it was like 20, 21 inches by 14 or 15, something like that. I had it set and I just sat there for two hours, cutting, 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 cutting. When that was done, I had my stack, about 50 or 60 of these things. And then I would sit, I went upstairs, because my wife actually has an ironing board. Little thing about me, I don't iron any, I don't iron any, any. It's official. Did not mean to do that. Second I tipped it, I was like, is it going to fall? Is it going to fall? And it fell. It fell. It's official. It's an official video. How do I do that every time? <laughs> I went upstairs. I used our iron for like the first time ever. I've used an iron within like a billion years. I don't iron things. Um, but <laughs> I sat there for like another two hours ironing and it was just like, oh my goodness, this is taking forever. Once the ironing is done, and the thing about ironing is if you do not iron these before you try to put your vinyl on them it you'll get little air bubbles and when you go to paint with the airbrush it seeps through and you end up with a blurry mess so it's part of the process now what i use for these is vinyl i use vinyl and a cricket a cricket maker cutter thing and it is that machine is probably the best investment i ever made in fact i'm going to put an amazon link down below in case you don't own a cricket cutter yet they're a little expensive, they're over $300. It's not cheap, but when I bought mine in 2020, I think it was 2020, I made up for it so quick. Like it paid for itself so fast. So I absolutely recommend a Cricut. What I used it for was this vinyl. Basically, I, instead of an iron on vinyl, I used sticker vinyl to make stickers. But what I would do is I would cut out, I'd put it through, get my Savi's designs that I found images of online. I actually have a bunch of images myself. Found them, photoshopped them, made them just black and white, loaded them into the Cricut software, and then I would cut them out in the right size. These, I want to say, are about nine inches total. And so I was able to, with my long, long, long Cricut board thing, I'll show you what it looks like. It's this big. Look at this. It's huge. It's it's two feet long. It's 24 inches total. Uh, and this is sticky. This is a very, and so it's sticky, which also means it catches hair and lint and all that kind of stuff which is never fun, and they're really, really difficult to clean and keep working well. Uh, but I was able to load two at once, so I feed that thing into my Cricut machine and just let it cut, which took a while, but I had to do, like I said, about 55, 60 of these things total. So it was a lot, a lot of time cutting. So you notice this footage is sped up quite a bit, but not only was it a lot of time cutting, afterwards, you gotta weed these things. So. Basically, so not not only that, like, so off the mat, I have to get a little tiny little hook thing 
and pull off the vinyl of the holes that I want paint to go through. Once you've done that and you've weeded, and again, weeding one of these took quite a while, took a few minutes each one to weed, times about 60, and I did, you know, each, I did them in different designs. I would do all of my protection defense at once. And so every one of these little squares and rectangles had to get pulled off. Each one, pull off, pull off, pull off, pull, systematically till it's free. And then when it's free, what you do is you get a transfer plastic. So you put that plastic over it, and it's like a, it's like a, basically a clear sticker. And you put that clear sticker over your vinyl that's been weeded. And then what you can do is you can peel all of that off of your, your tray, your, your whole mat, and you peel the paper backing off. So what you end up with is a sticky side going against a not so sticky side. And then when you peel that paper off, that side on the back is sticky, which you can then put on your fabric. So it's you're not really meant to put stickers on fabric, but that's why I used it that way, so I could peel it off after I was done. So basically what I would do once I have my clear transfer sticker sheet on top of my actual sticker, I was able to put it on the canvas itself and I would get my little brayer thing and kind of make it really smooth, make sure there was no weird air bubbles or anything like that. And once that was set and I actually did it for all of them at once and I sat there and I got them all set, laid them all out, I went then and got my airbrush ready and I would start the airbrush technique and I would just boom, airbrush. All the way through, you can see some footage here of me doing each of the different themes, it's sped up, of course. Um, but once you airbrush, and you put that on there, you gotta let it dry, you gotta sit and wait and let them all dry. Now the bad thing about my airbrush is it's going through some issues. I don't know if it's because it's a few years old, but it has an automatic reset. So when it gets low enough in the air pressure, it starts up again. There's something wrong with the motor where it doesn't quite kick back on. And what it does is it just like tries to like come back on and it won't for the longest time. So it's really, really annoying. And so this air compressor just like won't turn back on and what it does is it gets hot. And if I don't release all of the air out manually, it will get so hot that it doesn't turn back on. Then I have to wait like an hour or two for the whole thing to cool down. So, I mean, this is, we're talking hours upon hours upon hours upon hours to get five done. <laughs> so it took, that's why like I severely underestimated how long it was gonna take to get these done. Cause I took orders like, I don't know what, mid November? I think was the last order I took and I was like, okay, I need to like get these done. And so in my time that I had, I was like, okay, well let me break this into different sections. Like one day I'm just gonna do all the cutting. One day I'm just gonna do all the ironing. One day I'm just gonna do airbrushing. And I would find that in like, I'd wake up in the morning and start, but with the air compressor issues, I'd be able to do like, what, five, maybe? Five, six? And I'd have places for them to dry because they also have to sit there. That paint has to dry. And so I'd let them sit there and dry. Maybe I could squeeze out a couple more if I could find places to lay them. But then my air compressor would be like, nope, too hot. Can't work. So I'd have to sit and wait and do something else. <laughs> and so this like rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And that was just to get them started. Once I had the designs on there, then I would have to go in and cut these. Like literally with scissors just get scissors and I would get it and I would bunch I mean this is all random every one of these holes these are all done by hand the holes are completely random they're like none of them are the same not a single one of these things is the same so everybody got a unique different piece which is I think the really cool idea about it is that like every single one is different they're not mass produced they're produced by one dude in his little office <laughs> it's not ventilated enough as it should be office uh, <laughs> but yeah, so after that, I have to cut all the holes separately, and at the end, I was left with this big, huge pile of scraps. But not only would they cut the holes, I'd have to cut these little edges and make sure these were all good. And it was a lot. Times 60. Like, 55, 60. And so once that was done, then I'd have to hit it with more airbrush. i basically go black on the inside, a little layer of black on the inside, and then I'd hit the outside with brown and hit the others, all the edges with this brown, just to give it that kind of weathered cool look like it's been a little bit dirtied and yeah it, it was it was a really really neat fun project i don't know that i'm gonna be doing a whole lot of those in the future so i, mean, I might do more designs we'll see i did do a couple actually i i put together some other designs let me let me know how you which how you feel about this and real quick just for example to see the difference this is one that has not been weathered at all this power and control 
versus one that has been weathered. And I mean, it's a world of difference. They look completely, completely different. Notice that string coming off? I have so many of these little strings everywhere now. Everywhere. Which is why I like painting them, because when you paint them, it really seals the edges a little bit better. But here are some other designs that I'd kind of come up with. The Loath Cat Crew from Galactic Star Cruiser. Again, more strings everywhere. A little Loath Cat Crew something. For those who have kids and went on Star Cruiser, was toying around with doing something like that. It's a little different because it's multiple colors. Oh, and this one's kind of fun. This one, I think I'm going to do something different with if I do it again. Um, but of course, Gaia. Gaia's logo from Star Cruiser. But I put a little bit of that iridescent, like, you, I don't know how well you can see it on there. But the colors should kind of... It's actually the same kind of thing I used on this droid. It's like a color shift where it goes blue to purple. And it's got like a really cool color shift thing going on on it. You can kind of see it a little bit when the light hits it just right. But just some stuff I was playing around with. If that's something you're really, really interested in, let me know if there's other logos and stuff you'd like to do. Um, I know a guy named Kevin Kenka who does these. He's the one who inspired me to do them. He sent me some. He actually sent me one with the Dano channel on it. He does a really good job with them, too. Um, hit him up, too. He's doing them regularly. I don't have time to do them super regularly. Like I said, these took way longer than ever. But one of the things I wanted to do, and one of the things I said I would do, like on my second round of orders, I said, look, anybody who ordered these newer, higher priced, because these, these cost a bit more, they were $35, I think 34 and change, is what I was charging, which I found out wasn't enough with how much time it took. Like, it wasn't. <laughs> it took way longer to do each one, where I was like, okay, I, I severely undercharged for how long it took, as far as that goes. The actual materials weren't expensive. It does use a lot of vinyl. But it's a lot of actual work, a lot of actual cutting, a lot of like waiting, a lot of prep to get them to look like this. Um, but what I said on the second order, I said, hey, look, if on this certain day I can get, was it 10? I think if I can get 10 more orders by this Saturday or whatever the day was, then I'll give away Asabi's lightsaber. And you know what? It's going to be one of these protection and defense, the new ones, the new protection and defense lightsabers. And the people who are entered are those who bought these banners. I said, look, if you guys, if I can sell 10 of these things today, which helped like fund my trips, because this is how I fund my Disneyland trips a lot, is by doing this extra kind of work and stuff. And it's the side hustles that gets it done, right? So I said, I'm gonna, I'll give one of these away. In fact, I've got a whole extra tray right here, just off camera, a whole Sabi's tray with all the other pieces ready to go. So not only do I have a full set for me, but I have another full set for whoever wins. They get to build whatever saber they want. I'm going to email them. They can build whatever saber they want. And I'm going to send that out to them for free as a thank you for supporting me and my projects. And then with the other one, I'll probably put it on eBay or sell it just to make up my money on it. Because I don't need an extra one. And it's, you know, I, me, yeah, I, I just need to sell it. I need to move on and sell it. So maybe maybe I'll get a magic key. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But enough about that. Let's, um... Let's go over to my Wheel of Names, and let's pick a winner. Okay, so I've got everybody's name here on the wheel. All I have to do is click and spin to see who wins. So good luck to everybody. For every, like if people, some people ordered four, their names are on here four times. Just, just so you know, like I put their names in here four times. In fact, I'm gonna shuffle the names around just a few more times, just to mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna hit the shuffle button. You can see it shuffling here, shuffling all the names, shuffle all the names, and I'm gonna click, and we are gonna pick a winner right now. So good luck, may the force be with you all. Who is gonna be our winner? Who is it, who is it, who is it? Who is it, who is it, who is it, who is it, who is it? Brandon Smith, awesome dude, congratulations Brandon. So, Brandon, I'm going to email you just in case you don't catch this video. I'm going to email you because I have your email from the order. And say, brother, pick. You pick the pieces. I'll build it for you. I'll probably even do it in a video, and I'll build it for you. And it's going to be your lightsaber, and I will ship that out to you and get that over to you soon. So, congratulations, Brandon. Thank you guys for supporting my projects, for checking the stuff out that I sell. I've got some pins coming up and patches coming up soon, too. Probably going to be for pre-order that I'll be putting up over on shop.batubountyhunt.com. I think you can also hit the same site by shop.moobosdbc.com. But I'm like I'm stoked for you, Brandon. You get you get one of these lightsabers. In fact, you know what? I, I just put the blade in here and I realized I got my uh, my my modded blades. 
if you want, notice that one's the blue, it's, it's just like only slightly modded. I've got one that's fully modded. If you want one of these, Brandon, just let me know. And I'll, I'll hook one of these up too. Like I'll throw one of these in there instead of the other blade if you want one that's modded. Um, I need an excuse to make another modded one anyways. I think these look better. Uh, but if that's something you want, I'll throw that in. I'll give you one of those instead of the regular plain blade. Just let me know. Update. I've actually heard from Brandon since this is me recording a few days later. I heard from Brandon since and he responded and he let me know exactly what he wants to build. So we're going to end the video by showing off what he wanted to build. Now he mentioned to me that his son actually had gone to Galaxy's Edge recently and chose to build, wanted to do both. Wanted to build droids and lightsabers, which is a question I see people all the time. Which one should I do? What do I do? Well, his son chose to build a droid. Great decision. But was kind of bummed he didn't get to build a lightsaber. So now I get to build that lightsaber for him, and he sent me directions of exactly what he wants. He wanted a blue kyber crystal to start off with, so we're doing this right now. We're going to do a blue kyber. Will that, will that work? Can I make sure the battery is good? Okay, good. We got the hum going on. It's lighting up. Cool. And... He wanted this. He wa I'm going to put the, sw the switch next. He wanted this switch right here. I'll show you guys the close-ups in just a second of everything. But, yeah. Okay. Screw that on. So far. That's what we got. Not bad. I like it. Good choices. Good choices. Now, for the bottom sleeve, he wanted this one. Right here. Can I get it to go? Can I get it to go? There we go. Line them up. There we go. Line up. Maybe. Maybe not. Will you? Will you look at the at the saber? There we go. Okay. I can dig it. I can dig it. And then for our emitter, it's gonna be a blue saber. I can dig it. I like it. Oh yeah. Okay. Look at that. Look at that. That's a gorgeous saber. Like, I I really like this protection defense set. And for the blade, he wanted the one that was modded partially. So it's, a, it's got a little bit of hot glue mod that I put on there. Just a little bit. Not the whole thing, but just a little bit. And uh, you want to see this thing get lit up? You want to? Are you ready for this? You guys ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. I like that. I like that a lot. Dude, Brandon, your son built a pretty sweet saber. Now, you're also getting the pin and the sheath. Now, this came with a pin, so I'm also hooking that up, too. And the uh, the black saber sheath that goes with it. So I'll have that shipped out to you soon. But uh, there you go. Congratulations, Brandon, your son. Thanks for supporting my projects. Guys, thank you to everybody who supported and purchased any stuff from the shop. Again, I've got pins and other stuff coming out soon. Uh, in fact, I'm going to start putting some of my collection, my Micro Galaxy Squadron extras. I'm going to start putting on there, like in bundles, if you guys want to. If you want to grab them, because those little minis, the blind boxes are kind of hard to find. So I'm putting together little packages of them, like bundles of four or five figures, and I'll be selling them through that shop. Uh, you can get to it at shop.batubountyhunt.com. There's other links to it, too. It's always in the description. But guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, don't be a moof milker. Be the spark. <laughs>